My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not to entertain, but to educate and teach and put in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Are we really returning to normalcy here? Despite the 21.5 million people collecting unemployment benefits, is this the fabled V-shaped recovery that so many people were hoping for? Well, that's what the market's saying. Even as the average didn't do much, say Dow inching up 12 points, declining, that's been declining 0.34%. NASDAQ losing 0.69%. See, that's the problem. I think we're looking at a V-shaped recovery, but it's a V-shaped recovery in the stock market. And that has almost nothing to do with the V-shaped recovery in the economy. Prosper, live. When you look at the NASDAQ 100, the tech-heavy index that briefly hit an all-time high today, it sure doesn't seem indicative of the broader jobs picture. And most of the moves that were responsible for whatever gains we had were from airlines and hotels and casinos, all of which I put in the so-called less bad category, less bad than we thought, a trend that can last a few more days before it does peter out. And people do a lot of fast gaming of it, but it does peter out. It's kind of musical chairs. How can the market rebound without the economy? Because the market doesn't represent the economy. It represents the future of big business. The bigger the business, the more it moves the major averages. And that matters because this is the first recession where big business, along, of course, with bigger wealth, but that's not really my show, is coming through virtually unscathed, if not going for the gold. Small business, the ones that aren't publicly traded, They're dropping like flies after a government-mandated shutdown because they're non-essential. The people who work there are non-essential. It's hard enough to run a small business. How about when the government says you're closed and the landlord says, I don't care. That's the thing about this pandemic. It's been one of the greatest wealth transfers in history, and it's a wealth transfer that was mandated by the state. I think that we'll have a, it'll have a horrible effect on our country, but we've barely begun to see the impact. Still, we just got some figures from the American Bankruptcy Institute that will chill both Republican and Democrat. That's right. The today's numbers show a 48 percent jump in Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings. That's that pesky real world asserting itself. But the only big bankruptcy that we've seen in the, in the stock market is Hertz. Now, I'm not trying to blame the government for this. The Treasury Department is practically shoveling money at small and mid-sized businesses. They can't find enough of them. There's still $186 billion left in the Paycheck Protection Program. The companies that took the money just got a big break. They only need to spend 60% on their employees to get the loans forgiven down from the original 75. That's important as most small businesses fail because they can't afford to pay the rent. They can cut back on labor. They can skimp on the product. They can figure out ways to work more efficiently. But they can't lower the darn rent. And from what we can tell, there hasn't been much forbearance from the major landlords. But in the end, the stimulus package probably won't be enough for one simple reason. And it's an odd one that's not talked about enough. It's not going to work because of social distancing. Social distancing has become the real bane of small business and a boon to the larger ones. Again, while that's not really anybody's fault, it's producing some terrible outcomes. Lately, we've seen... Uh, we've been seeing some real improvements in the coronavirus numbers. However, that's only happening due to the widespread adoption of mass and social distance guidelines. The problem, though, is that it's very hard to make money at a restaurant or a retailer if you're not allowed to, uh, if you've got to wear a mask at a bar. It's just such a buzzkill, and, and you can't have crowds anywhere. In the restaurant industry, which employs about 15 million people, social distancing means losing a ton of tables and a lot of bar space. The latter is brutal because alcohol is where the real money is. But for big business, let me give you a concrete example. I walked through this and I decided this is how I am going to explain it because it keeps eluding people. It's driving me crazy. Costco. Last night, Costco reported some magnificent 5.4% safe store sales growth versus last year. Wall Street was only looking for 1.6%. They also saw an incredible 106% pickup in e-commerce. You heard me, 106. The stock moved up four points in appreciation while everything else got clobbered in sector. Costco has, except for the lowest end retailers, Costco has a simple ethos. 
They try to focus on a small number of producers where they can move huge volumes, thus securing some terrific bargains for their customers. They don't try to make money on markup. You get better prices when you buy in bulk. That's the power of what we call scale. Now, consider what they sell. All sorts of foods, steaks, crab legs, fish, all at much cheaper prices than your local butcher or fishmonger. They sell auto parts for astoundingly less than what you'd pay at the local mechanic. The apparel prices are as low as it gets. No department store can beat them. Fruits and vegetables, they're better looking and more organic than anything your corner green grocer can supply, often at half the price. I am a bit of a wine official. Chianato, not great, but good enough. And they were selling Camus below the price that my liquor store pays to the vineyard before even marking it up. Health and beauty aids, don't you dare compare them to Harmon, owned by the hapless Bed Bath & Beyond, a place that had to be closed for <laughs> it didn't get to open until May 30th. Costco sporting goods so inexpensive that you have to wonder how any mom and pop competitor can stay in business. Maybe Best Buy can compete on electronics. Maybe not. I know that local jewelries tried to bring in special inventory, but not at Costco special prices. Paper towels, toilet paper, they had to limit how many you can take because the prices were so great. Uh, thank heavens that's gone. The only category that Costco didn't compete in this month is hearing aids. The vision was closed. They're still the cheapest place to get this ultimate baby boom product, but they won't bring them back until they can sell them safely. Don't worry, though. They're coming, as are Costco's terrific free samples in a newer, safer form. Now, I bring up Costco because a month ago they instituted a policy saying that all customers need to wear mask covering their mouth and nose at all times, unless you're two. No mask, no shoes, no service. We initially heard a bunch of stories about a potential backlash from shoppers who boycott the chain rather than mask up. You probably saw those. A lot of people said, oh, that's the end of Costco. Mask, mask, mask. Wrong. Turns out most customers understand. If anything, the mask policy has helped them immensely because people feel safe to shop in there. That plus Costco's 16 feet wide aisles give Costco the one-two punch against COVID-19 and the supermarkets or any other store for that matter. For all the chatter about frustrated Americans who don't want to wear masks to shop, the reality is that most consumers desperately want a safe place to buy their essentials with masked men and women manning all parts of the store. Hmm, let's see. Okay, highest quality, lowest prices, Incredibly wide 16 feet aisles, safest shopping experience, all masked, other than Amazon, which you have to put the box out there for 24 hours. But who the heck can compete with that combination? That's right. And there's the problem. I want you to go to your Costco, go aisle by aisle. And what you see is the destruction of nearly every small to medium sized retailer right there in front of you. Now, the local guys are starting to reopen, but they're in debt. They're struggling to pay the rent. They've already lost customers with big box chains who've now tasted them and loved them. And they just can't compete with Costco on pricing or, more importantly, safety. They can't rival Target, order a head and pickup, contactless, of course. They can't beat Walmart with its ability to deliver anywhere, anytime at low prices. At best, these mom and pop outfits can set up an omni channel Facebook shop powered by Shopify, which is better than nothing, but probably not enough. And that's just retail. Smaller restaurants, even worse. You can rip out half the seats from most of the big chain locations, and they're just going to make up the difference with takeout and delivery. But ordinary restaurants, they get crushed by delivery because the real money's at the bar, and delivery takes a chunk of their profits. Remember, I co-own two places, and we could lose two-thirds of our tables if we are lucky. We aren't even allowed to be open right now in order to meet the rules that we don't even have yet. And we're costing a fortune just to find out what those are. Our Italian food at the Longshoreman may be better than the Olive Garden, but how the heck do we make money with only four tables instead of 12? And by the way, you can't, we don't have a bottomless salad bar. And if you try to steal our rolls, good luck. Now, what's happening to small business all over the country and the stock market will never capture that kind of pain that I just described. Instead, they'll capture all the gain as the larger outfits take share from tiny companies. And those are the ones of the stocks that we're trading. The bottom line, you might say that's just capitalism. But the logical conclusion here is a world where we have a handful of big retailers and a handful of big restaurants well, all publicly traded, and that's it. Without a second stimulus package, that's what the future will look like. I guarantee it, and you won't enjoy it, even if you profit off the rising stocks of the big box stores that are taking over the world and more in the corner store and whatever the heck it once pervade. Zach in Pennsylvania. Zach! Hey, Jim. Big booyah from Eagles Nation. How are you? Eagles Nation's getting ready for a season, even if we're not allowed to go see it. I'm good. How about you? Good, man. So I have a two-part question. I'm in my early 30s. I want to know, is Sherwin-Williams a long-term buy, and can that stock get to 1000 
You know what? It's so funny. I happen to like the stock of Sherwin Williams very much ever since they bought Valspar. But I like even more. I, I, no, look, let's just leave it that. I think Sherwin Williams is a great company. I was going to say I like Lowe's and Home Depot, but you know what? I'm just giving it to you. I'm giving it to Zach. Sherwin Williams is a winner. Just, by the way, not a lot of competition in the paint business. You notice that? They shouldn't have let all those companies combine. Hey, why don't we go to Mark in Iowa? Mark? Hi, Jim. I'm a new investor that bought Delphi Technologies when it was low. Right. And they're being they're being bought out by Borg Warner late quarter three or quarter three or quarter two or quarter three sometime. Mm-hmm. Now I need to better better understand how that affects a company's value when it buys out another company oh. like that, or is there more value in selling? Right, let me the- just say, Borg Warner's down 20%. For the next one's to run, and I know that's what I say, run. There are people actually running stocks these days. They ran the hotel. Now they're running, they're running the uh, airlines. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to run the autos. That's just my prediction, and Borg Warner's one of the runs that they're going to run. Magna is the best in that segment. And when I say run, you know exactly what I mean. Go read my besotten Twitter file that I can't barely get through. Disgust me, frankly. I'm disgusted by it. I don't need Twitter any more than the president. Oh, no. The president needs it. I forgot. All right. I think we're looking at a V-shaped recovery in the stock market, but not the economy. This is what the one for the stock market. This is the one for the economy because that's live long and prosper. And quite frankly, you may not enjoy what's about to uh, happen in the real economy. Well, Man Money tonight, I'm sitting down with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to talk employment, reopening plans, and the role that business can play amid recent civil unrest. It'll be good because tomorrow I'll be speaking to Vice President Pence. Then my sit-down with CEO J.M. Smucker. Find out if the latest quarter could offer some food for thought. And Shopify is up over 100% over the past two months alone. Is there still time to buy this red-hot stock? I've got the exclusive. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.